Hey, how you doing? My name is Mark Pulisovic, and you're wondering how to become a businessman. The answer is simple. I read a lot, read a lot, learn a lot. I mean, Warren Buffett said it himself. He said, it's good to learn from your mistakes. It's better to learn from other people's mistakes. There's no better way to learn from other people's mistakes than to read, than to seek out mentors and to seek out people who are successful in what it is that you're doing and learn from their mistakes, learn from what they did wrong so you don't have to do the same thing. That's exactly what I do every day of my life. I read different books. I'm reading a book by Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, and he has a thick, thick book, a huge life story of him sharing all his mistakes, all his successes, all his ways of thinking, all his beliefs, all his ideas, and all that stuff is constantly being poured into my head. So it can't do anything but good for me, for my, me and my dreams of becoming a truly, truly successful, highly successful entrepreneur. So it's a beautiful thing that we can it's a beautiful time period we live in that you have your, you just found me on YouTube. Most likely you can search Warren Buffett, um, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, some of these great businessmen, you can search and listen to them speak and share and take in their ideas. That's the best way to become a businessman, a truly successful businessman, learning from the best of the best in anything that is that you do. So I'm also in the home-based business industry. I have my own business that I work from home. I'm doing this in my living room and I, my, my office is in my room over there with my computer. All I need is a laptop and a computer. Even if you don't live anywhere, you can go to a library and build a business here. That's an amazing thing, an amazing time period that we live in today. So you definitely have the opportunity to become a truly successful businessman. Today, I'm going to be here to help you out, show you some great people to learn from, some of the best of the best. And we have, I partnered, because I love learning from the best of the best, I've managed to surround myself with the best of the best in the home-based industry. So what I have right below this video is a link that I'm going to take you to. Just click it right below, hbl.nxt-school.com. It's going to take you to a free report I created for you that shows you seven essential ideas of building a home-based business from anywhere in the world. And you're also going to be able to watch a video that my partners, those same top-notch industry leaders, are sharing exactly why our business is, why we believe it's the best of the best, how our business works, and what we do to to spread our business, basically. And hopefully it's something that you're interested in, and hopefully you're 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 ready to get, to get that journey of truly becoming a successful businessman. Either way, I thank you, and hopefully this video is of value to you. Thank you once again for taking time to watch this video, and hopefully I can talk to you soon. Take it easy. Dual agency is when a particular real estate agent or broker represents both the buyer and the seller. For instance, um, Keller Williams is a brokerage and there is a broker of record whose license is registered as the broker for that office. If somebody from that office has a buyer and somebody else from that office has the seller, that's dual agency. If I represent a buyer and a seller on my own property and I represent both parties, that's also dual agency. In terms of establishing whether or not a transaction is a dual agency transaction, the buyer and the seller, the buyer in particular is going to know that up front. Then the buyer is going to know that he's asking an agent to write an offer for him who already has the listing on the property. That's a choice that the buyer makes. Many buyers decide not to do that. They go find other representation. Many buyers won't buy a house unless they're buying it from the selling agent. The selling agent normally knows more about the property and it's the disclosures are a little more complete, many times a, pr a better price can be negotiated. It's hard because you're wearing two hats. <laughs> so you're representing the seller, you're representing the buyer, and this is in the, in the situation where you as the agent are representing both people. It's not where the broker of record has two agents that are representing the parties individually. It, it gets hard because, and it's more work actually for us, because we have to be very careful that the buyer and the seller consistently believe as they should, that we're representing their best interests. In the agency disclosure document that you sign with a buyer or a seller, uh, the first thing it spells out is, is that the agent has a fiduciary responsibility. And you have that responsibility to both sides. You need to represent them both to the best of your ability and to keep them intact and whole and not at risk. Basically, it is completely and totally up to the buyer to have a comfort level there. Again, it's, it's this whole issue of checking on the broker. If you really do want to work with the listing broker for some peculiar reason, you want to create this dual agency situation, then you need to at least check that broker's credentials out. At least I would, that's what I would do. I would check them out and make sure that they're an honest and upright and reputable broker.
So this is part of my morning ritual. Usually I will wake up, this in hand, um, make sure I'm on, up to date with whatever appointments there are for the day, and then just see how many emails. So right now I've got 73 unread emails. Um, so I'm kind of on track. 